For 300 years, the most powerful nations on earth grew richer and stronger on the profits of the slave trade. Over 12 million men, women and children were forcibly transported from Africa on slave ships like this to the colonies and plantations in North and South America. Today, slavery is illegal in every country on the planet. But the truth is slavery did not die in the 19th century. It is alive, it is thriving, and it is bigger than ever. Hundred and fifty years ago, the slave trade looked like this. Today, this is the face of slavery. We were locked in prison. We were not paid at all. If anybody refused to work, they would be beaten. Do these things is completely free. Do one cent is not paid. Then we, we have to pay our family to pay our money. In China. The government says, we are going to be able to make billions of dollars per year if we convert the prison system into a factory system. China is the world's factory. Once an isolationist communist state, over the past 20 years, it has become the biggest exporter of consumer goods anywhere on the planet and a huge proportion of those exports come to America. This is just a small part of the enormous docks in Los Angeles, which stretches along 43 miles of coastline, and it's where just under half of all United States imports from China enters the country. And in 2010, the United States imported just under $250 billion worth of goods. But behind at least part of the economic miracle of modern China are an estimated five and a half million men and women locked up in prison and forced to labor. Here is a country which has decided to flood the world with very inexpensive products. A great number of those are actually produced by enslaved people who are in prison. That has to be called state-sponsored slavery. China has the biggest penal colony in the world, a top secret network of more than 1,000 slave labor prisons and camps known collectively as the Laogai. Laogai in Chinese means forced labor and forced to reform. They believe the people brain can be changed. In 1960, Harry Wu was locked up in the Laogai. His crime, being a counter-revolutionary rightist who criticized China's then ally, the Soviet Union. He spent 19 years in the camps. Now one of China's leading dissidents in exile, his US-based foundation investigates and documents the secrets of China's prison labor slaves. Different crime, different sentence that you can see right here. All different people, all kinds of different people here. Chinese president said, we want to see two products came from the labor camps. The number one product is the man who had been reformed is not going to fight against the communists. So that's no the first religious. product of first the Lao guys. The yeah. man. Second product, the product made by the man. This is the factory where you were? One on. uncle mine. And when you walk in, the first question is, who are you? Second question is, what is this place? And the third question is, why are you here? And the answers are? I am a criminal, yeah. This is the Lao guy. And? I am here to reform through labor. Correct. Harry Wu filmed the first undercover footage inside the Laogai. For doing so, the Chinese government tried to send him back to the labor camps. 
It's a top secret. That's why in 1995, the Chinese government arrested me and sentenced me 15 years. They charged me stealing state secrets. I, of course, I didn't involve any military, political, social issue, whatever. I just want to find out how many camps. One reason why China wants to keep this vast network of camps secret is that each is a commercial operation, making and often exporting everything from industrial machinery to cheap consumer goods. Many, many prison camps right now making the products include garments, include hair, include T-shirts, include Christmas lights, include the toys, all kinds of things. Um, they don't care. The second reason China tries to hide its population of prison slaves is that many are political or religious dissidents. Christians in China can only worship legally at state registered churches. But many refuse, choosing instead to attend unlicensed house churches. If caught, they are frequently sent to the Laogai. We've come to Los Angeles, California, to meet a young woman who was persecuted for her beliefs. Abigail escaped from China four years ago, but because she left her family behind, she doesn't want her full face to be shown. Like many religious dissidents, Abigail was imprisoned without ever being tried a system of administrative detention China calls laojiao, or re-education through labor. Abigail was sent to Shenyang Women's Laojiao Camp in northeast China. It holds an average 1,000 inmates, a mixture of drug addicts, criminals, and religious dissidents. All are forced to work in its in-house factory. In January 2007, a few months after she was released, Abigail escaped to the United States. But it was not until Christmas that year that the pastor in her new church understood the bitter irony of what she had been forced to make while in prison for her beliefs. We brought out, of all things, the Christmas lights. And just when I was pulling them out, it was like this little yelp from her, you know? And she says, I make those, I make those. And, I, and I'm saying, you make what? What is it that you're making? She goes, I make those, I make those. And I say, the lights? She goes, yes, I make lights. Officially, China has banned the export of all prison-made products, but our investigation has discovered Chinese companies openly set up to do just that, apparently with state backing. 
Henan Province Justice System Clothing Processing Industry, a prison system clothing factory. We have 15 years of industry experience combined with 26 prison factories. We have more than 12,000 workers in absolute stability. Not only are the workers not paid, the machines are entitled to financial subsidies. The formation of the plant was recognized by the judicial system. Posing as a British-based clothing retailer, we call the phone number on its website. We discovered that behind it was a company called Henan Zongfu Trading Limited. The man in charge, Mr. He Tsi, was happy to explain how he used prisoners to make his products and even sent us photos of his operation. Many of the men and women forced to work for Laogai companies are recognized internationally as prisoners of conscience. Charles Lee is a follower of Falun Gong, a non-political spiritual blend of philosophy and Eastern mysticism, which has millions of practitioners throughout the world, but which China designates a cult. We're trying to improve ourselves from our inner heart according to the principles of truthfulness, compassion and forbearance. In the meantime, we do the meditation exercise to purify our body. In 1999, China began to crack down on the Falun Gong movement, locking up to 100,000 of its followers in the Laogai. In 2003, Charles Lee left his home in the United States to take messages of support to his fellow Falun Gong practitioners inside China. He was arrested and sentenced to three years in the Laogai. They used about a year trying to you know, brainwash me, trying to force me to give up my practice on Falun Gong. Then they figured out, you know, it might be not possible. So they changed their, their strategy to force me to feel like a criminal. Because according to their theory, a criminal should be reformed through labor. Because labor can create a human being, that's their theory. So they forced me to do that slave labor. Charles was held in Nanjing prison, 170 kilometers west of Shanghai. In common with all Chinese penal institutions, it was both a prison and a commercial business, marketing its products through official trade organizations. Each prison camp have two different names. One is enterprise's name, like a construction company, like a, a farm, a, a brick factory, chemical factory, whatever. This is one of the products Charles Lee says he was forced to make. Novelty slippers in the shape of the American cartoon character Homer Simpson. He particularly noticed the product information label sewn into each shoe. The label is in English, it's not in Chinese. It was designed to export to Western countries, not selling in China. In 2006, Charles was released from Nanjing prison. When he returned home to America, he was able to buy the Homer Simpson slippers in a local department store. Each had the same label he had been forced to sew inside them. It shows the name of the US importer, SG Footwear of Hackensack, New Jersey. SG Footwear's website describes the company as a worldwide leader in the marketing of children's and adults' footwear with annual sales of $100 million and licensed to market novelty footwear to a number of leading US brands, including the Simpsons. 
We asked SG Footwear about Charles Lee's allegations and what steps the company had taken to ensure that this supplier was not using prison labour. SG Footwear failed to respond to our requests for an interview. But 20th Century Fox, which owns the rights to The Simpsons, told us... Fox takes allegations of this nature very seriously and requires the strictest standards of ethical conduct from all of its licensees. SG Footwear's factories are monitored by both internal and external inspectors to ensure full compliance with Chinese labor laws. And the company maintains that it has never knowingly utilized involuntary labor in the creation of any of its products. Because Chinese labor are cheap, cheap, cheap. For us, you know, we, we were locked in prison. We were not paid at all. We were forced. We, if anybody refused to work, they would be beaten. US federal law bans the importation of any prison-made products. But to Harry Wu, who has devoted his life to exposing prison labor slaves in China's Laogai, there's little sign that Washington wants to enforce this when so much Chinese trade is at stake. Certainly in the past 15 years, there have been fewer than 20 attempts by US Customs to enforce the law. Today, only America had the law. But unfortunately, I think the American government tried to ignore it. The reality is they just care about the money, about the business, about the requests from entrepreneurs. Harry Wu has good reason to be suspicious of America's commitment to stamping out the importation of Chinese prison slave products. Ten years ago, Harry volunteered to help an insider from the Laogai defect. Huang Peng, a senior official in Shenyang prison in northeast China, had unique evidence of the export of prison slave labor products to the West. Wang Peng is the deputy chief of Shenyang prison. And he also is the manager of the prison company for export of products. That prison factory is the largest rubber boots manufacturer in China. Wang Peng had details of the way these boots were exported to major American retailers. With assurances from the U.S. State Department that it would help him defect, Harry arranged to meet Huang in Russia if he could escape across the Chinese border at Vladivostok. So I tried to convince him that America grant asylum and come to the United States. He came to me uh, with his wife and with his son because she knew that if he tell the truth, he will be big problem. And the first defector from inside China's prison factories kept his side of the bargain, bringing unique first-hand testimony detailing its slave labor export secrets. I'm called Huang Peng. Who is the second prison? His size is very large. Some of the... 要是二十四小时的生产的一条线能生产出一万双鞋因为我们家里知道这种鞋不能出口到美国所以通过一个窗口一个生产单位就是从这里生产了把鞋拉到这个单位完事通过这个单位再卖给美国我想美国是一个自由民主的国家他一定能收留我这样的人。But within months, the U.S. State Department refused to grant Huang Peng a visa. Russia eventually handed him back to the Chinese government. For the past 10 years, Harry has searched for news of his friend's fate. He now believes Huang is imprisoned 
in the very prison slave camps he tried to expose. The American government has never explained its change of heart, but Harry has his own theory. I feel very bad. I would not say some people betrayed me, but this is the case I learned that America supposed not going to focus on Chinese false liberal products. Getting movement in China is very tough because the countries, the United States, Great Britain, the other Western European countries that would normally be the ones who, to call for change within a trading partner are themselves nervous about ever criticizing the Chinese because they owe them so much money. They know that if they overturn that particular apple cart, they can seriously damage their own economies. And it's a sad truth that if you look across the history of governmental responses to slavery, it will be slavery that always takes the back seat. Whatever one thinks of the US's enforcement of its laws relating to prison labor products, Europe lags even further behind. The European Union imports almost 247 billion euros worth of goods every year from China. That's equivalent to almost 355 billion US dollars. And yet, there isn't a single law or regulation covering this specific area of prison labor products. In September 2010, members of the European Parliament demanded action on Laogai products being illegally exported to the EC. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, wir alle wissen, dass sich hinter den Laogai ein untragbares System von Arbeitslagern in China verbirgt. Schon allein die Existenz dieser Arbeitslager ist untragbar. Doch wenn ich mir vorstellen muss, dass etliche dort hergestellte Produkte in unseren Läden zu finden sind, dann ist das einfach widerlich. Das Europäische Parlament hat das Laogai-System bereits bei früherer Gelegenheit verurteilt. Aber wir müssen zur Kenntnis nehmen, Laogai-Gefängnisse tragen zugleich Namen von Handelsunternehmen wie normale Wirtschaftsbetriebe und verschleiern auf diesem Wege die wahre Natur ihrer in Zwangsarbeit hergestellten Produkte. Monsieur le Commissaire, quand l'Union européenne interdira-t-elle l'exportation des produits des camps Laogai? We took that question to the EU trade spokesman John Clancy. This is a difficult issue for us. On the one hand, uh, the EU uh, clearly condemns uh, China's uh, sort of support and backing of this uh, enforced prison labor, the Laogai, and products that come uh, from China into the EU or elsewhere, for that matter, into third countries. Um, but on the other hand, it's a question of how do you deal uh, with this issue. It seems that, uh, from my information, the Chinese state uh, actually looks at information around these products as a state secret. So, of course, it's very difficult for the EU and for other countries to identify these products and say, this product uh, is clearly made out of a Lagoy, you know, enforced prison labor uh, compound and therefore should be, uh, should be banned. Ultimately, the responsibility for stamping out this state-sponsored slavery lies with the government of the country which benefits from it. For more than two months, we asked the Chinese embassy here in London and the Ministry of Information in Beijing for a filmed interview to discuss prison slave labor in China. We provided details of all the allegations in this film. But despite subsequent phone calls, emails and meetings, we're still awaiting any on-the-record response to our request. China's deliberate policy of using prisoners as slaves to boost the profits for Chinese export companies continues unchecked. And Western governments remain reluctant to rock the economic boat. As long as the world's consumer markets place a higher value on cheap products than they do on human life, the misery of five million prison slaves locked up behind these walls will continue.
In the next episode of Slavery, a 21st Century Evil, a major worldwide television event, a public debate about how the world can end the trade in slaves today.